Cougar fans, it is time. Touchdown! What a grab! It's time to raise your colors, raise your voice, and join in on the raucous roundtable about your favorite team, the BYU Cougars. 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown! It's time to tailgate. Cougar Tailgate, where BYU sports fandom lives. And here's your host, Lauren McClain. What's up, Cougar Nation? I'm Lauren McClain, and we're here to tailgate with you doing what we do best, talking all things BYU Cougars. For this week's roundtable discussion, we have former New Zealand ankle weight b-ball champion Johnny Linehan. Yes! How'd you like that intro? That was nice. Yeah, and BYU TV sports producer, and I would say you are part of kind of the BYU royalty Hema hey, Muli. Thank you. Kia ora, everybody. <laughs> kia ora, kia ora. Hey, Hema doesn't need the ankle weights. Have you seen his no, he, calves, no. though? Like, that's why Huge. I wore them. I'm waiting to be that 45 year old dad with the new balances, and then I'll get the calves. But Hema's already there. Let's do it. Is that something you work on, Hema? Do you like calf My raises? calves? Yeah. No, I don't. Okay. They're, they're just, just they're just that way. They're just tonguing. Yeah. I love it. All right, it's good to be back at it after the holiday break and watch BYU basketball make its Big 12 debut, or is it? We'll get to what we think of BYU's 0-2 start in conference play in a minute, but first, let's hear from you, the fans, about how you're feeling about the Cougs. We asked BYU fans during Saturday's game against Cincinnati this week various questions about their BYU basketball fandom. And here, my friends... Is number one. All right, who am I here with? Andrew Franklin. What would you do for a Final Four run this season? Um, I'd cut off a majority of my toes. I think uh, BYU basketball is destined for the Final Four at some point uh, under Mark Pope, and why not let it be this year, just make a statement first year in the Big 12? That'd be awesome. Uh, guys, would you cut off any toes or fingers for a Final Four appearance in BYU? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Not for <laughs> BYU basketball. <laughs> Maybe for football. The phalanges. How far does your fandom go? Phalanges yeah. are important, which actually brings up a different type of question. Would if you had ten thousand dollars and it was ten x for every, if you had ten thousand dollars for every finger you cut off, but it was ten x. I'm butchering that, but essentially ten thousand if you cut off another hundred thousand, cut off another million. Okay, oh, okay, okay. How okay. many fingers would you cut off? This guy mm. seems like my type of person right here. He'd be he'd be taking the whole he'd be going double clubbing <laughs> with oh, a billion man. dollars. If he's cutting off, yeah. If he's cutting off things for uh, a, from BYU Final Four, I guarantee you he's going to do it for a couple Does million. Does he like the three? <laughs> <laughs> I think this guy big likes basketball it. guy. Big <laughs> basketball guy. All right, here's number two. All right, who am I here with? Quincy Thomas. What would you do if this team were to make a Final Four run? Oh, I don't even know. Um, I'd probably pass out, honestly. Yeah. Like pa- just like faint of excitement. Yeah, I think so. I think so. I so, so he took well, it the, the other way, he right? He did. Like, yeah, he's uh, he's gonna pass out. I I don't know if that would be my reaction. What would be your sincere reaction, Hema, if BYU made it to the Final Four in basketball? Oh, I would. You know, you know that uh, um that RG three face where he's like, ooh, yeah, <laughs> like that's the face I would have for the rest of the tournament. That'd be incredible. Like, how are we here? Yeah. What about you, Johnny? I, I don't know. I just want to go back to that guy. He's definitely from California. I don't know, bro. I don't know, dude. I'll just, I'll just pass, pass out, out. dude. And go, go right away, bro. <laughs> I, I don't know. If they make it to the final four, I'm going to have to go. So I'd, I'd oh, pony yeah. up and I'd go. 100%. Yeah, yeah that, actually, that absolutely would be my reaction. I'm ponying up the money, which could be a, a couple million. You got to start cutting off some fingers. Well, I mean, if that's if the you case, we're gonna to have to reevaluate <laughs> this, this statement right here. Maybe a maybe a thousand, yeah, <laughs> a couple million. We'll cut off some fingers. Yeah, there you go. Okay, here's another one. Who am I here with? Mackenzie Webster. What would you do if this BYU team were to make a Final Four? I don't know. I would probably cry. Tears of joy. Tears of joy. Tears of joy. Like I mean, to be fair, it is hard to be put on the spot. Like, what would you do? If you, you made it to the final four. Crying. But, yeah, she yeah. sounded very Californian, she by did. the way, too. I didn't know. There are a lot of Californians here in Utah now, <laughs> yeah, as we do true. know. They're kind of taking over. Okay, she's she's got a couple more. She had some great responses. Here's another. What's your favorite part about the BYU team, Mackenzie? I really like how they go for the threes and they don't waste time doing the rebounds. <laughs> Yes! <laughs> Last night we didn't waste time doing the rebounds. <laughs> they out-rebounded Baylor. 
Just so you know. Oh, on the offensive glass, I mean, we're generally yeah. better at crashing the boards. But. They don't, yeah, don't waste time. <laughs> don't waste. Rebounding. That's, that's more just the Utah shoot game, threes. right? They didn't waste time. Just rebounding. shoot threes and then run down to the, you know, the opposite side of the court. Love it. All right, one more from here. Here we go. Who's your favorite player on this BYU basketball team and why? I like Trey Nell because he likes to shoot threes and he's really good at it. So I don't know if he goes by Trey. Oh, <laughs> is that it? a mix of Trey His Stewart and Trevin? His name is Trevin. Trevin. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> Trey, like three. Oh. It could be a nickname. I mean, I don't know about Maybe. it. I don't know about Trevin or Trey's personal life. Is he married? Or they could, I don't know. I don't, he's married. This, he's okay, married, yeah. if that's the case, we don't want to start Yeah, we won't. We <laughs> if he wasn't, then who knows? Mackenzie might know something about Trey that we don't. That's, yes. Maybe that's her pet name yeah. for Trey. <laughs> Trey, yeah. Trey Nail. Yeah, I mean, we're going to start calling him that. Hey, well, Trey Nail for three? I know, that's Trey what I'm now. saying. It, 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 it truly fits. Thank you, everyone, who participated in that. We can't wait to hear from you next week. All right, guys, based on your preseason expectations and now two Big 12 conference games in, how has BYU matched up to where you thought they'd be at this point in the season, Johnny? Probably exactly where I thought they would be, honestly. <laughs> really? Like, yeah, I, I always felt like starting the season, we started off really hot. And I don't know what it was, but it started to bother me how much we care about, what is it, the NET or the net rankings. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like, yes, we're the best on paper, <laughs> but we don't win basketball games when it matters. So I, I always felt like, hey, when we play a, a real team and we got a little challenge against Utah and lost that, and now we've played a couple of conference games mm-hmm. and – we're going to look back at the end of the season, and these are going to be the ones that have got away from us. Just have to win these games when they're there for the taking because you're going to come up against some teams where they're going to shoot lights out. And these first two conference games, they haven't. It's been right. there. BYU just hasn't stepped up, and they've, they've kind of choked when it mattered. Yeah, I think you're right. What about you, Hamill? I'm going to say that we're st- I, we're st- BYU is still overperforming. I think they they are still exceeding my expectations prior to the season. Um, you know, they're, they still got what 12 wins. Um, we knew that the the Big 12 conference games would be tougher. Um, so I think BYU is just you're seeing the progression in real time. You know, I would say the Cincy game. Uh, sorry, the Baylor game, BYU performed better than the Cincy game. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the Cincy game, they performed better than that Utah game that they lost. I think it's a gradual progression. I think they're getting better. Um, but I think as far as uh, conference games goes, this is kind of what I expected. Yeah. It's, it's going to be a tough a, a tough game every single night in the Big 12. But overall, I'd say BYU is still exceeding expectations. I agree. I, I've been pleasantly surprised this season. If I look back at how, was, how I was thinking before the season even started, there's no way I would have thought they only had three losses at this point in the season. Like that that wouldn't have – like no way, right? And I actually even – and we're going to get to this about how we thought BYU looked in their first two conference games. I think BYU has – has hung with them. And and it's like Johnny said, it was there for the taking. They didn't take it. But I think it could be something that BYU was doing that made it so it wasn't there for the taking or they weren't, they weren't shooting lights out, right? BYU has been playing very good defense this entire season. So, Hema, let's start with you. How do you feel like BYU has looked specifically in these first two conference games? Um, I think they look good. That said, um, there's still room for improvement. I think the most disappointing part from the fandom perspective is that the Cincinnati game, we kind of had it in hand, and I would argue BYU lost that game, right? Yeah. The Baylor game, I would have chalked that up as a loss because it's a road game to Baylor, who's very, very good. No one was expecting BYU to win that game. But BYU led for most of that game. Yeah, yeah. So um, I think overall in these two two conference games, BYU has been performing really well. I think the frustrating part about both games is that BYU has been doing some things that are out of character or that they could have, um, if they had performed better or not fouled so much, for example, like they would have probably pulled off a win in one of those games. Yeah. What do you think, Johnny? Yeah. Amen. Ditto. Everything that Hema said. BYU, BYU basketball has done the worst thing to BYU fans, which is give us hope. <laughs> <laughs> they gave us hope, and now Haven't we're all you now, <laughs> now, it's the hope that kills you. Yes, yeah. and now we're all yeah, way too overly optimistic. But no, they've done really, really well. I think the the one thing that I would call out that has been uncharacteristic, like Hema said, was they've just started to play more 
individual ISO ball mm-hmm. as opposed to let's pass it around, let's get an open shot, let's work together. And I don't think that that's a cultural issue. I just think that that's just the occasion. These are the big games. They're feeling the nerves. They're right. not. They're not playing as loose and as free. Yeah, we beat these these teams that we should have beaten by a lot of points. But we were playing free, so we just need to get the swagger back, play free again, no matter who the opponent is, no matter no matter what the occasion is. And you know they're playing a little bit nervous. You're, we're the mm. new guys, right? BYU mm. is the new guys, and they're stepping into these to these big games. And Cincinnati is new as well. But I think BYU, the BYU team, is feeling it out. You know, I think they're feeling it out a little bit. In the Baylor game specifically, I think BYU looked like. They belonged, especially in that first half. Half. They just need to figure out a way to finish games. They had a better shooting percentage than Baylor, 49% to Baylor's 43%. They out-rebounded the Bears, more assists, better free throw percentage. The two glaring stats going against the Cougars are turnovers and fouls in that game. BYU had 14 turnovers to Baylor's 5. BYU shot 20 free – or I'm sorry, Baylor shot 28 free throws and BYU had 14. Mark Pope clearly was not happy <laughs> with the referees when it came to that. But I feel like a ton of that was in BYU's hands. We talked about this at the beginning of the season, but BYU lacks someone with star power who can just take over the game and just insert their will on the court. I feel like that that is something that you see in these other teams. Very, very physical. BYU's just not quite as physical. I think they can be. I think they they have fight and they have that spark, but they have yet to use it, at least in conference play. So I think that's something that's lacking. After last night's loss to Baylor, who is the player you feel most comfortable having the ball in their hands, Johnny? Oh, man. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm drinking the Kool-Aid. but I, and, and, again, he hasn't played super great over the last couple of games, but Ali Khalifa, I yeah. just love it. I feel like he creates a lot of options, you know, whether yeah. it's that screen or just him having the ball backing it into the lane. I, I think he's a guy that's really stepped up, been a huge surprise, huge over, over performer, and I've been super stoked to see his progression this season. But I just love the options that it gives. Even last night you saw some really quick, nice dishes to the corner for some threes. Right. And I just think when he has the ball in the paint, he acts as like Jokic. Jokic, Jokic uh-huh, uh-huh. the Joker for BYU, and I think it just creates a lot of options. We can cut to the rim, we can shoot outside, and teams have to pay attention to him because he's a big presence. Right. I love that take. What about you, Hema? Man, I was going to say Trevin Nell, but I, I agree with you because yeah. when Khalifa has the ball, Trevin Nell gets better looks from three, and we know Trevin is hot from three. Um, so actually, I think I'm going to say Ali Khalifa as well. They're such a good duo, though, when Trevin gets on, or Trey. Trey, when, when old he's, Trey. Trey. When he's on fuego. <laughs> yeah. He's our boy Trey. He's making it rain. It, also makes, me, like it also makes me feel better, like Ali Khalifa's assist to turnover ratio. It's like, literally, he takes care of the ball yeah. more yes. than everybody else. So, um, yeah, so I like that. Yeah, and he's not doing easy passes either. No, he's, they're amazing. They're really, he's really talented. I uh, Yeah, with how many turnovers, I, I like... It in Spencer Johnson's hands, if I'm being honest. Like the veteran players, I'm like, all right, they're going to take care of the ball. <laughs> Let's do something with it. Not that it's anything fancy, but yeah, BYU ha- has just struggled with that so far. So, what's your biggest concern with this BYU team up to this point, Hema? Um, biggest concern? I don't even, I wouldn't even say that I have a concern. I would say um, the biggest thing they need to work on now, and they're getting there, is just. Um, not panicking down the stretch. You know, you saw it in Cincinnati when they were behind. They didn't panic. They just played the entire game. Baylor, when they were behind, they didn't panic. They just played their game for all, you know, 40 minutes. Like, BYU has yet to do that. Um, they're getting closer and closer. I would, or I would argue Baylor, they played a lot of the game from start to finish without, you know, um, dipping off like they did against Utah or against Cincinnati. Um, so I think they just need to learn how to finish games. I think you said that. That's that's the biggest thing that they need to work on. Um, because if they can just trust in their shooting, trust mm-hmm. in their guys, not panic, then they won't. The ball won't get sticky. They will go and crash the boards and get rebounds. They will um, look for the better shot, like you know, good, better, best shot. They'll look for the best shot. So if they just not panic, you know, I think yeah. that all those things will come into play. But 
They have yet to do it, but I think they can do it. And, and going to UCF is a good opportunity for them to get that done. Absolutely. I think that Baylor game had to have been a confidence boost for them, honestly. Like, oh my gosh, we can hang. Mm-hmm. This is one of the, the best teams in the country, not just in the conference, but in the country. And BYU was right there and maybe should have won that game. They just kind of gave it up at the end. So I feel like heading into UCF, they got to just just harness that and be like, hey, we belong. We can we can beat these teams. Not just mm-hmm. we belong, mm-hmm. but we can beat these guys. What do you think? What's your most glaring concern with this BYU basketball team, Johnny? I mean, you know how much I love basketball, especially as I look outside at <laughs> snow on the ground. It's the greatest sport, <laughs> especially in the winter. My parents are in the room, so I don't want to say in the world, okay, Dad, rugby is the best. Cool. But basketball <laughs> basketball is amazing. Um and the beauty of basketball as well is that no matter who the team is on any given day, they can win it. And that's what's so great about March Madness, as you'll hear me say often. Also, the thing that's beautiful about basketball that has been working against BYU basketball is the ability for teams to go on runs. Now, BYU has gone on runs, but when these good teams have gone on their runs, BYU has struggled to stop mm-hmm. the run. And I feel like their first line of defense is, oh, crap, we have to get a three, and and then they get off a terrible shot. You mentioned you love the, the ball in the veteran Spencer Johnson's hand. When he attacks the basket, I feel like he can get to the rim mm-hmm, every time. Mm-hmm. So one thing I would love to see from BYU, as opposed to just freaking out when teams go on these runs and, and being careless with the ball and turning it over or jacking up these long, lofty threes, just take it and get an easy bucket. Just survive survive these runs. Teams are going to go on them, especially in the Big 12. You have to survive, keep putting points on the board, and then you'll go on your own run. Mm -hmm. I love that. I completely agree. We're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we're going to play BYU basketball, buy or sell. This is Cougar Tailgate. Welcome back to Cougar Tailgate. I'm Lauren McLean alongside Hema Haymuli and Johnny Linehan. Okay, guys, we're going to play Buy or sell BYU basketball style. And the first one is BYU will finish top five in the Big 12 this season. Hema, are you going to buy it or sell it? I'm going to I'm gonna sell that until until BYU can prove that they can string some wings to get wins together. Um, I'm going to sell that. Wings sound good too, though. Wings, yes. They always sound good to me. <laughs> what do you think? Buy or sell? Top five. Big stock market guy here. I'm still going to sell. <laughs> I still think they're overpriced. Um because I sold them when they were undefeated and 12-1, and one, uh, <laughs> I'm still going to sell, but it's getting close to buy territory. Yeah, I'm going to buy it. I If they figure out how to play all 40 minutes, I think they could be so, so good. There are four other ranked teams right now in the conference. That makes BYU number five. It's I know it's so tough from top to bottom. It is just an incredible conference, but I think BYU can do it. All right, number two is Ali Khalifa should start – even though Foos is back. Hema, what do you think? Buy or sell? Buy. Yeah. Uh, big Ali Khalifa guy. Foos is great. I love Foos. His game is different. It's it's not the game that BYU has been winning 12 games with. Right. So until he gets you know the rust off, I would argue, um, I would buy having Ali Khalifa start. Johnny? Yeah. Buy, absolutely. Big Khalifa fan, and I think – yeah, I think he's. <laughs> I just think he's earned it. Yeah. Right. I do think Foose is a little more physical, and we do need that. So, seeing them in the rotation is important. But yeah, I, I love what Ali can do off the ball. Yeah, I'm gonna buy it. Foose isn't his normal self yet, and you can see he only played ten minutes against Baylor, and BYU needs him to get there quickly, though. <laughs> like as yeah. they as they head in through the conference, because because like you mentioned, Johnny. They need the depth, the depth and the strength underneath big time that comes from Foose because they don't really have that um, anywhere else on the team because there are some of these teams that are, can just impose mm. their will, some of these big guys. And you need a big guy like Foose underneath that can do that and, and be physical. And on a cold three-point shooting night, uh, BYU could be in big trouble. So I feel like you need you need a, a big physical presence. Ali Khalifa, though, for now, I think is the guy. You go with the guy. He's he's earned it. He deserves it until Foose is 100% healthy. I mm. think it's got to be him. All right, the last one is UCF is a must win for BYU on Saturday night. Johnny, are you buying it or selling it? Yeah, I'll, I'll buy that one. I think okay. you got to stop the bleeding. I think you got to got to get a win, especially with another new Big 12 Entry, making up words now, but yeah, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm buying that. I think we've got to get the wheels back in motion, and I think this is a good opportunity to do it. And if if you don't do it here, then 
yeah, you might let things snowball. Right. What do you think, Kama? Um, I think you got to buy that. I, I mean, I don't think it'll affect the overall season if they if they drop this one, but it is. Um, you can only say, oh, we hung with these teams so much, right? <laughs> so like true. After a while, you're yeah. like, let's just get a dub. And right. I think that's this weekend. And, and UCF is a good team. But what's funny, when you look at the conference, you're like, oh, UCF is the team you got to beat. But, I mean, they are they are very good. You yeah. know, they've only, yeah, they're 9-4 and four currently. So, But I agree. This is a team you have to beat. I think if you can't beat UCF, the rest of the teams are going to be extremely difficult to handle. I don't want to say near impossible. But if you if you can't beat UCF, where are you going to get your wins at? In True. This I mean, and then you look at like Houston just lost to Iowa State. Yes. Like, which is BYU plays next week. Mm-hmm, next Tuesday, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's what makes the conference so fun. It is besides fun. being away and not being able to see what's going on because the cameras. 4,000, 3,000 <laughs> feet in the sky. That was insane. But it makes the conference so fun because every every game you have to get amped, you have to get up and. We're watching with binoculars in our TV. <laughs> right. Hans Olsen yeah. said the funniest thing on Twitter. He was like, what is this, a game for ants? <laughs> was like yeah. what he said. A was game funny. for ants. I have to know, you guys, what did you think of the water bottle smash by Mark Pope? I thought it was funny. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> like, it came at a bad time. Yeah. Like I It kind of came at a bad time. I mean, as a jazz fan, you know, you, you remember the Rudy Gobert swat with where he swatted the water bottles and it oh, sprayed yeah, everywhere. Right. Like. It's funny. Like, you know, no one got hurt. They got a little wet. Like, right. I thought it was funny. I yeah, loved it. I mean, yeah, it was funny, but it just needs to happen sooner. If you're going to get teed up, yeah. don't do it sure. when you're still somewhat in the game right. with 50 seconds left. Do it with 10 minutes left and try to get a little bit of momentum from it. So I think it was also frustration, but when you do that and you give up a tick, you kind of waving the white flag at that point, and it might have already been waved, but... I don't know. I always like watching the people's reactions as well and seeing some of yeah. the assistant coaches. Yeah. They're like, we can't react. We might lose our job. <laughs> They're just like, well, just go with it. Yeah. not moving. Yeah. <laughs> they, did. they didn't even look over they at Mark Bell. They just kept their eyes forward. Right. You see yeah. a little smirk from Greg Rebell and Mark Durant, but that's like the yeah. only reaction you see in the whole thing. Yeah. Right. All, all Polly's will understand. Like, your dad smashes a water bottle. You don't move. You don't look at it. <laughs> don't make eye contact. Yeah. It'll just, just go forward. away after a while. <laughs> see, I, I loved it as in, I'm like, yes, because that's how I was feeling. It's almost like he channeled all of our rage mm. for us when he smashed that water bottle. I mean, I haven't been Not paying much time. attention, but, it, but he doesn't. He didn't wear a suit last night. Is it an away game thing? or? Oh, I don't know. Is that's he trying good. to mix things up? It didn't yeah. work, but I like it. Him would he have him smashed the it? Show. Yeah. Yeah. Would he have smashed if it, it if he was wearing suit? a suit? Ooh, that's a great question. Is yeah. it dry clean? <laughs> I don't know. Surely, right? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> All right, here's some random UCF facts before heading into this game. BYU and UCF has, have never met in men's basketball, so that will be fun. Among Power 5 conferences, UCF is the youngest. Sorry, Power 5 teams, they're the youngest. They were established in 1963. UCF's first sports program was basketball and was created to play in Florida, a Florida rec league in 1969. <laughs> we totally could have played for UCF. It was a rec league. Heck yeah. Notable alum. Do you guys remember Taco Fall? Oh, yes. yeah. Just giant. Yes. Played for of UCF, course. one of the NBA's all time tallest players. And in his four years at UCF, he set the record for career blocks with 280. Dang. The Knights recorded their first NCAA tournament win in, ni- in 2019. UCF has changed their mascot at least three times. <laughs> this I love this. They started out with the Citronaut. The Citronaut, yes. Uh, a strange mix between a Florida orange and an astronaut. Mm-hmm. Is that all you really? Is that all you got? No, like, that's awesome. I think it's great. <laughs> have Citronaut? you seen their merch? Their merch is really cool. <laughs> I have not seen I it. I need to see this because I'm I'm thinking and I'm I, yeah. I hope what I'm thinking is the depiction of it. It's like the alien on the Jetsons. Do you remember that show? Okay. No. <laughs> Steve Jetson. <laughs> we are the Citronauts. I don't uh, Yeah. I'm glad they changed. For their sake, I'm glad they changed to the Golden Knights. <laughs> that's that's much better. I want to know, guys, if BYU were to eliminate the name Cougars, what, what would their mascot name be? Oh, I've thought about this a lot. Oh, okay. Uh, what do you I'm, got? A, I'm a big fan of getting rid of the Cougars. Here's why. Because really, because there are so many. People. How many fatal cougar attacks have they been in the last hundred years? <laughs> I think it's only been like two or three. Yeah. They are not aggressive, and we need them to be aggressive. We need to be something like mosquitoes. I don't know, yeah. like <laughs> dengue like fever. People fear us. Yeah. Mosquitoes. Yeah. Uh, I, no, I, I actually don't know what I would change us to, but but cougars. I mean, you have to stick with it now, but 
I don't know, when I think of like fear, I have this joke at work that's maybe getting less and less of a joke as time goes on and I'm getting more <laughs> overconfident. Know. But I'm like, if I ran into a cougar, I think I could take a cougar. Yeah, oh, yeah. No. Not that I could like beat the cougar with my bare hands, but I think I'm walking out of there alive. <laughs> Like interesting, not, interesting. Not Cosmo, but just like yeah. a, a real cougar. No, yeah, Absolutely. I figured. I'm sure you guys have seen that video. Of that guy walking in Rock Canyon in the mall. Oh yeah, just kind of trailing him. behind him. Oh no, that's scary. like my nightmare. That you is kidding? Scary. But he didn't do anything. Well, it's because. But so it could have. We need it could have. a mascot. No, a cougars is fine. But if we were to change, it would be something like aggressive, like like the, a mosquito, like the polar bears, <laughs> 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 which might make sense. Yeah, oh, that's, snow outside. Yeah, we're on. We could be the BYU Stanley mugs. <laughs> oh or, come on! Uh, Do you see the new pink ones going yes. like hotcakes? It's yeah. crazy. <laughs> Do you? Have, you have? Is, is that? A I don't fake have Stanley. Stanley. No, uh, sure. You can call it fake Stanley. This one's a fake Stanley. Yeah, I actually like this brand better. I'm not going to even say what it is because I don't remember what They're it's not called. A sponsor, but I like it because it doesn't it doesn't uh, tip or spill mm. better than a Stanley. Right. Okay, so no, I'm not one of those Utah moms. Okay, I don't have a Stanley that I carry. So not the BYU Stanleys. Yeah, not the BYU Stanleys. All right, we're going to play football by or sell because as much as we love talking about men's basketball, football is always relevant, re- relevant, yeah, relevant, and relevant. Uh, but yes, there's still a lot happening. So buy or sell. New Baylor and UCF transfer Gary Bohannon should be BYU's starting quarterback next season. Hema, you buying it or selling it? Uh, I'm going to say sell only because um, I don't have a good reason. <laughs> I'm going to say sell. Also, does it go by Gary or Jerry? Because it's G-E-R-R-Y. I don't know. That's I don't a nice know. Parks and Rec reference <laughs> if you watch that show. Um, I think I it's Gary. Okay. Is it Jerry? We're going to see. I don't, Gary. I, I don't know. We'll, we'll know, right? I mean, by this fall, we're going to know you say it. But. Yeah. Or will we? I don't know. What What no, do you think, know. Johnny? <laughs> Being a buy or sell it? No, I'm going to hold. I'm going to check the fundamentals more before I make my decision. No, I, I don't think I want to buy it, so I'm going to sell it. Yeah. Because I don't think the backup quarterback or the new quarterback, the new shiny objects, always the fun thing. I, I don't think you discount like Jake Ratzlaff just mm-hmm. because- Okay, he ended the season not great, but he's still very talented. And I don't want to just sell it and say, hey, you're our guy moving forward. We haven't seen what you can do under our scheme or with our players yet. I want him to go and earn it. So I, I want there to be a ton of competition like I know there will be in spring ball. And so that's why I'm going to sell it right now because I think it's any man's job. And if we can find somebody else in the portal too, I'll also be stoked. So. Yeah, <laughs> agreed. So Jake Retzlaff should be getting a shot. I want to see some of the younger guys compete too. Ryder Burton, Noah Lugo, who just signed with BYU. Let's mm-hmm. see what these guys can do. They do. They might be able to come out and and shock some people. The I don't know. Open competition is going to be going to be yeah. fun, but it truly has to be an open competition. Like every day, we're reviewing yes. the stats. Not a Rod has his in the back. Yeah, it's open, but like not when open. Keaton Slovis came, he said he's our guy. Mm-hmm. Like from that's what Aaron Rodgers said from the very beginning. He said right. he will be the starting quarterback. Right. That's going to be deflating to the other guys. I'm not saying it's wrong because that probably gives confidence to the other team members, right? They're like, hey, Keaton's our guy. Let's move forward. And I think there's something to that. But there's also something to a a competition and guys having to work their hardest and really seeing which one is going to be the best guy and fits Mm -hmm. best with the scheme. Because you could argue that Keaton Slovis maybe didn't fit best in Aaron Rodgers' scheme, Mm -hmm. right? I don't know. Yes. Okay, early January prediction, guys. BYU makes a bowl game <laughs> next season. Are we buying it or selling it, Johnny? Oh, I'm buying that. Let's go. I'm yeah. buying that. Yep. Yeah, def- definitely. I I think even last year with how frustrating it was, BYU is close. Do I think they ever make the playoff? <laughs> Maybe the extended playoff. Do I think they ever win a national championship? No, I'm pretty realistic. <laughs> I don't think ever. But – the bowl game, top 25, absolutely should be the floor. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking they make the top 25, so, of course, a bowl game. Emma? Yeah, I'm buying that. I think our our defense looks leagues better uh, just off of recruiting. I'm on oh, that yeah. recruiting hype train right now. Um, we just need to put the pieces together. Uh, people will argue that it's a tougher schedule next season, but I think it's a better schedule because it's, uh, you know, rivalry games have more juice. Mm-hmm. We got – we got to go up up north for one of those games. Uh, Arizona's going to be a, a, a foe this season, so I think, uh, yeah, it's there's going to there's going to be more juice, and BYU is going to be more up. I think. Johnny, do your parents understand the rivalry 
and what it means to uh, BYU. No, the rivalry but, with Utah. No, but we've tried to say it's it's similar to the New Zealand All Blacks versus the yes. Australian Wallabies rugby rivalry, <laughs> which which is pretty pretty tense. But I think like the fans care. This is going to sound harsh, but the fans do care more than the players, For especially sure. in the NIL era. I also think that that's okay because. I do think part of the kryptonite for the BYU teams, not just the football team, but especially the football team over the last 10 years of this drought before we finally mm-hmm. got one, was we get too amped up for it. We get too excited, and then you don't play loose. You need to be, yes, it's an important game. Yes, it's excited. But if we play the game like we normally play it, we should be good enough if we truly trust our team and trust our playbook. But sometimes we get too excited and we're too emotional. And so... I don't actually mind the fans getting more amped up than the players. We should circle it. It's a very important game. you got to win those, especially now you're in the same conference. But you don't want to play with too much energy. You have to still be under control. I remember one of the arguments against Brunkle Mendenhall was that he didn't even really talk about the Utah game when it was coming up. Like he just made it. It's just like every other game, you know. And then – so was that so you played under both of them so I'm curious what was the difference between how Bronco approached it versus Kalani Well Bronco was interesting and not to get super religious but we are BYU so why not <laughs> The night before so it was Bronco's last game when we played Utah right at the Vegas Bowl and uh, David A. Bednar came and spoke to us. And the year before, we had played in the Memphis Beach Bowl. I wasn't on the team, but I was a student. You remember how that ended? Of course, oh, yeah. I did. Of course. Yep. Yeah, with, with, the bra- the with, with, with the brawl at the end. Love them. Um, <laughs> and, like, I really do love them. That was a bad moment. And, man, Kai's, Kai's such a great dude. Awesome so guy. it kind of stinks that that's, like, always yes. going to be over his head because he's an awesome person. Yeah. But the next year, David Bednar came to speak to us at our hotel the night before the game. And he's like, Guys, don't embarrass us again. <laughs> really? <laughs> and so we embarrassed them a different way by giving Utah 35 so we point really lead. really embarrassed. And then, yeah, we lost the first quarter, but won the last three. More victories, baby. <laughs> but oh uh, so I think we took his words t- too much to heart. But no, Coach Minhall absolutely cared. And you could tell because he had already signed with Virginia and he still coached the bowl game. Mm. We decided to take the buses instead of flying to Vegas so that we could take the extra money, put it into expansion in the weight room he could have said no I'm flying it's my last game like I don't need to give BYU anything more and so he was always a BYU guy and he would get us up for the games so were Kalani you can tell and I actually like circling these games these ones mean a lot we're going to practice with more intensity we care about these games more than the others but then you also have to same mindset when you go into the game Hey, I'm not gonna rush things. I'm not gonna push things. It's gonna be the same. So it's weird. You got to get amped up during the week, but then as soon as the whistle blows and for those 60 minutes, it's just game on as usual. And that's when your sports psychologists come into play, right? Right. <laughs> Which I do think BYU lacks. Yeah. Quite frankly, yeah. That was one thing Bronco was big on, and I'd love if I saw Coach Satake get bigger on kind of the sports psychology. We'll see what happens. All right, guys, that does it for us today. Thanks again to Johnny Linehan and Hema Muli for coming on the show with me. Carter Bond and Tori Kimball helped produce this episode with senior producer Cleon Wall. You can join the Cougar Tailgate wherever you get your podcasts, on Apple, TuneIn, Stitcher, Spotify, or on BYURadio.org. Cougar Tailgate is a production of BYU Radio. BYU.